Hi, my name is Nick Barker and this talk is called Naming Things is Easy and it's about names in software. So just in summary, if you don't have the patience or the time to watch this entire talk, of course the title is a joke, naming things is definitely hard, but if you don't create the thing, then you don't have to think of a name for the thing. Uh, and what, what I mean by that is the less concepts that you can introduce into your program and the less things that you have to name, the less difficulty that you're going to have with naming them. English and other human languages are just generally poor at describing technical concepts or side effects of code. And as a result, every new variable name, every function name, every class name, every interface name, every file name, every directory name, every command line argument, whatever, every one of those is another chance to name something badly, to miscommunicate the effect of some part of the code. So it's really important uh, to remember that abstractions actually aren't free. And every time you add a new name to the code base, you have to think about the mental overhead associated with people having to understand the name and the maintenance of that name in the long run. So just think about that and weigh it up against the benefits that you'll get for every abstraction and treat new names seriously. So just so we're kind of starting from the same uh, baseline, what do I actually mean when I'm talking about a name in software? Well, I'm basically talking about everything that isn't, uh, everything in a program that isn't syntax or comments. So all the things that you as the programmer have discretion over uh, what they're called, variable names, function names, argument names, types, struct names, struct member names, that type of stuff, all the syntax and the things that aren't built in that you have control over. I'm referring to all of these things as names. And as a general rule, what we tend to see happen is that as code becomes more abstract, as code, code bases often, as they become larger, um, not always, but often the ratio of names to code becomes larger and larger. A larger percentage of a file is occupied by names and less of the percentage of the file is occupied by actual operative code. And this starts to create problems for us as, it, as we end up with more and more names in the code base and less and less code. So an interesting thing that you might not have thought about is that if you're writing a program in Rust, you're probably mentally in that model of Rust is the language that I'm using right now. All I'm using is Rust, right? But the thing is that every time we write a program, we're actually always using a minimum of two languages, right? We're using a programming language to write the code to communicate with the computer, so Rust in this case. And uh, the vast majority of the time, we're also using uh, human spoken or communication language, like English in my case, for all of the names in the program. So we're using uh, Rust and English at the same time. And the thing is, code is actually really great for communicating technical meaning. It's the shared language that we all have as developers. We can read the same code and understand it. The problem is that English is actually really poor at describing technical things. And that's a problem because, as I said, all of our variable names, function names, stuff like that, they're all represented in English. So if we think about this in terms of how technical language works in mathematics, uh, I went online and I found kind of the most compact, modern uh, English summary of the Pythagorean theorem that I could. And it's... In a right triangle, the area of the square whose side is the hypotenuse, brackets the side opposite the right angle, uh, is equal to the sum of the areas of the squares on the other two sides. Right? And if you've ever done trigonometry before, you would probably know that the algebraic representation of that mammoth of a sentence is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, not only is the algebraic representation much more compact, but honestly, it, if you understand how algebra works, it is much less open to misinterpretation. It's actually much more clear than the long wordy English version. We really need technical language to describe technical concepts because English is not designed for this type of thing. If English was actually good at describing technical concepts, we would just write our programs in English, but we write them in code because English isn't good for describing technical effects and uh, logical flow. 
Naming's been hard basically since names started becoming a part of programming and it hasn't been fixed in more than 50 years because English is broken for this type of thing fundamentally. Uh, so there's nothing really we can do to actually fix uh, naming. It's always going to be difficult. Um, so the best way that we can get around that is by naming less things. So something that you might not have thought about before is that the compiler doesn't actually care at all about the names that you use for things. Uh, I have three functions here. One is request data and update store. The next one is rec data. And the third one is just the single letter R. And if these have the same body, the same implementation, the same arguments, they're all the same. The compiler doesn't care which one of these names you use. And you can actually see examples of this in production because when we ship JavaScript out to run in browsers, we actually run it through a step often uh, where we compress all of the function and variable names down to single characters to save transfer space. The compiler doesn't care about the names that you use. They just care that the symbols match, right? So if you really think about it, names are actually just comments, but they're even worse than comments, right? Because unlike comments, we basically have to use less than 20, about 20 characters for our, for our names. We can't use punctuation. We can't use white spaces. And as a result, names have all the same problems that comments do. You know, they're inaccurate kind of by default because they're written in English. They go out of date if someone changes the uh, implementation of a function but doesn't update the name. And the ironic thing is that this phrase, uh, good code is self-documenting, which people use often as a justification for not writing comments. Uh, the people who say this type of thing, it often comes hand in hand with using a lot of abstraction. And given that names are basically just equivalent to comments, it's kind of ironic that people would say this and then use a lot of names in their program anyway. Uh, it's worth pointing out that if you get a room full of 100 experienced developers and you basically show them in a language that they all use, like a basic loop and some data transformation inside, like 100 of 99 or 100 of them will be able to read it and understand what it does. But if you take the same 100 developers and you show them a function called map quote to best subquote, uh, you'd be lucky if a single one could accurately guess what the actual technical implementation is um, and it shows how you can the code is basically good at communicating technical concepts and English is really poor at it just to really hammer the point home every name that you create is a burden of responsibility you have to think carefully about how you name things because every additional name is in increasing the complexity of the code base and the chance that someone else including your, you in the future will read the name and misinterpret it is very very high uh, every additional name and concept is more cognitive load. And the funny thing is people say that deleting or modifying code is hard, you know. But the thing is that deleting code actually is easy. It's deleting names that are hard because you have to think... It's dele Deleting names is hard, right? You, you have to figure out how those names fit into the other naming schemes in the code base. You have to introspect the functions to find out what they do. If you can read code, you can generally understand it. And as a result, you can maintain it a lot more easily. So what do we actually do uh, about this problem? I've raised a lot of problems with the names that, uh, with the, the way that names work and no solutions so far. So what are we gonna do? Well, the first tool in, your, in the toolbox that you should always reach for is just don't name the thing. Uh, if you don't create the thing, you don't need to name the thing. Uh, and this actually sounds a lot easier than it is. Uh, the temptation to factor out your code is always high. It happens to me, happens to everyone. And the interesting thing is a lot of the time this factorization stems from this uh, approach that we're taught in university and as junior developers often, which is don't repeat yourself or the dry programming philosophy. Uh, but one of the problems is that we can't always apply this type of thing without uh, increasing our complexity to the point where the trade-off is not worth it. So I would say in a lot of cases, do repeat yourself because often 
The thing we're trying to factor out to avoid the repetition in the first place is actually the overlapping part of a nonsensical Venn diagram. We're grouping together two objects that should never be grouped. Uh, if we take an example of like uh, representation of, in code of a cat and a chair, uh, an eager kind of dry uh, engineer might look at this and say, oh, you know, these probably have some overlap. And I just thought about it for a few seconds and I, I was able to factor out this center of the Venn diagram here, which is house object with four legs, right? You find both a cat and a chair in your house. They both have four legs. Kind of makes sense. There's an overlap between the two. But the thing is that if someone comes across house object with four legs in your code base, they're not going to understand what it does, right? So uh, one of the solutions to the naming complexity is just... Uh, if the name doesn't really make sense for the thing that you've factored out, don't factor it out. Just repeat yourself. It's much easier to understand. To give you an idea of another way that this type of factoring abstraction can fail is imagine you're asking a developer to represent a pair of scissors in code, right? What are they going to do? They'll probably stare at it for a while and think, ah, you know what? A pair of scissors is actually just two identical sub-objects, right? Connected by a hinge in the center. One of them's flipped in a mirror image, right? So they'll treat uh, one of those sub-objects. They'll create a representation of that sub-object because that's the way to break it down with the least amount of repetition. But the problem is when you split the pair of scissors uh, in half, you now not only have the complexity of having to compose two sub-objects together whenever you want to create a pair of scissors, but actually even worse than that, you now have to come up with a name for half a pair of scissors, right? To represent it in your code base. And I guarantee you, in a pull request later in the day, you and your team will be arguing about whether that this half pair of scissors should be called a sizz or a half scissor or blade with hoop handle right and there's going to be a new engineer that joins in three months and sees this object and is like what on earth is a sizz and they're like oh it's easy you just have to use sizz composer factory to bind two scissors together but make sure you only bind two of them and don't get them backwards so it's only blunt in the cutting part you know uh, this type of unnecessary factoring out to avoid repetition can lead to much more complexity in the long term so really the motto of simple and ugly is something that is very useful to use. Just because something looks ugly in code doesn't mean that it's a bad implementation. Uh, you should always try and inline, inline the code where it's used if it's only used once because code is much easier to read and understand than the name is. In general, don't create an in interface if you only have one implementation, even if you think you're going to use the interface for another implementation at some point in the future. Wait until you have multiple implementations before you decide what the shared pieces should be. Don't split a function in half just because it's long. Um, sometimes we just can't avoid having that much logic in one block. Uh, you should split things up by functionality, not by obsessive organization. You shouldn't just break something in half uh, when those halves are only ever used together. In general, you want to avoid aliasing things, so don't have two names for the same data, the same variable, the same location in memory. Um, and something that's really important in a general sense is that you want to always be trying to solve the problem that you actually have now, not the problem you think you might have in the future. Because if you think naming is hard when you're trying to name something you actually have, try naming something you don't even have yet. It's almost impossible. And of course, the fundamental is remember that every new name that you introduce has a cost. They're not free, so don't just use them like they're free. Don't rename variables as they're passed through is a great uh, little uh, mental note that you can give yourself. So if you are receiving a function argument and all you're doing is passing one of those function arguments to a subfunction, don't call them different things. Just use the same name all the way through so someone doesn't have to have the overhead of understanding multiple different names and concepts. 
So an example of this is if you retrieve data from uh, an API on a client and the data that you get back is called product price, don't store it as item price on the client, just store it as product price. Like having that uniformity in names is really gonna help you maintain the low mental overhead in learning and, and understanding the code base. In general, I like to say prioritize fewer names over better abstractions, um, which is the scissors example, like uh, fewer names generally are easy to understand than way more names, but uh, what you would consider to be a cleaner abstraction. And of course, whenever you change existing functionality, make sure that you look at your names and uh, make sure that they're still relevant. Update your names. Don't be afraid to change names if they're no longer relevant to the data that they're pointing to. And the reason for this is because, like I said, names are just comments. If you're gonna name something, treat it like a comment. If you absolutely have to create a new name, um, if you were writing a comment, you wouldn't write a comment describing what you think the function is gonna do in the future, right? You describe what it actually does. So you should do the same thing with names. The name should represent what the thing actually does, not what it's gonna do in the future. And in exactly the same way, uh, don't have wishful thinking with your naming. Don't describe what you wish the function or the variable did if the abstraction was ideal. Describe what it actually does. I found that people often uh, will have an abstraction that matches perfectly apart from one small little bit of leakiness that doesn't really match the reality of what's happening and they'll fail to represent that leakiness or the inappropriateness of the abstraction in the name that they choose for it. And as a result, they try and hide it. Uh, and that's the worst, worst thing to do. We want the, the problems to be exposed, not hidden. Uh, that's all the tips that I have. Uh, I hope this didn't sound too much like a rant, uh, but I find that I fall into these traps myself and it is a constant battle to keep code as simple as possible. But if you can keep your code simple with as few names as you can, you will really thank yourself when you come back in two years to try and work on your own code or if someone else is working on your code two years from now, having less names, clearer names, more direct names that describe the functionality and more readable uh, code rather than names and obfuscation, those engineers will find it much easier to understand. Thanks.